going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you how to easily grow peppers in containers so you can be harvesting fresh peppers from your backyard or porch. Let's go! This is the end goal right here, to have organically grown peppers in containers that are fresh and ready to be eaten. Now let me show you how anyone can grow peppers just like this. The first thing we need to do is choose which varieties of peppers that we want to grow. I suggest you try one of these two varieties or even both of them. These are some of my favorite kinds. To the left of me here, we've got the Criolla de Cocina, an excellent variety that I suggest you get into the ground. And another one to my right here, this is the Jimmy Nardello, a fantastic pepper as well. Now that we've chosen which variety of peppers that we want to grow, next we can start getting our seeds planted about six to eight weeks before our last expected frost date. I like to plant my seeds in cells and use a high quality potting mix like happy frog soil. After filling my trays with a quality potting mix, I plant my pepper seeds about a quarter of an inch deep. Then I water the whole tray, cover that tray with a plastic cover, and then put it in my house on top of a heat mat. I place my tray on a heat mat because pepper seeds will germinate based on the temperature of the soil. So if the temperature of the soil is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, then the pepper seeds will only take about seven to 10 days to sprout. But if the temperature of the soil is like 55 degrees, then the pepper seeds will not germinate. Once my young pepper seedlings first try to push their way out of the soil, I take my tray and bring it to a location that gets full sun. I prefer bringing my tray into the greenhouse before the pepper seedlings truly emerge out of the soil. Because if you allow the peppers to pop out of the soil in a spot that doesn't have a lot of light and is warm, your pepper seedlings are gonna grow really weak and really spindly at the start. After all my pepper seedlings have sprouted, I thin out the weakest ones and leave only six peppers per cell. Once the pepper seedlings have two true leaves, they're ready to be transplanted to a larger pot. I like going from my small cells to a four inch pot. I don't like going from my small cells right to my five gallon bucket. The reason for this is because it's too cold outside for me to put my plants outside. So I have to take these plants and put them in the greenhouse. So when I transplant into the small four inch pots, that allows me more space in the greenhouse. After the young plants growing for a few weeks in the greenhouse or an indoor grow room, they can be transplanted into their larger pots. Before we transplant our peppers into their final home, I want to mention that it's really Really important to have good drainage when growing in pots because if your plants don't drain well then that encourages root rot so what I like to do is I take these five gallon food safe containers that you can get from like Home Depot or Lowe's then I drill a bunch of holes in the bottom with a half inch drill bit this may look like a lot of holes but what I do is I put a tray underneath my bucket this way anything that flows through when I water my plant it captures that and then the bucket and the plant are able to suck that moisture back up. This way, I'm not just flushing all the nutrition out of my soil every time I water it. Now that we've got all of our plants ready and our container ready, we can start working on our soil. So you could either use a quality potting mix like a happy frog soil and just plant into that, or you can make your own soil like I do. My basic soil mixture consists of three equal parts. It's one part, either peat moss or cocoa core, whichever one you prefer. One part, compost. And then one part, either vermiculite or perlite. Vermiculite is going to help with water retention. Perlite is going to help with uh, drainage. So whichever one you want to use, that's up to you. I take all those three ingredients, mix them together with a tarp, and then put my soil into the five gallon buckets. I'm using mushroom compost as my compost component. And because it was already used to grow mushrooms, the nutrition can be a little depleted. The mushrooms have sucked a lot of the available nitrogen out of the compost. So to compensate for this, what I like to do is mix in about a half of a cup of an all-purpose fertilizer into my soil. Now that our buckets are filled with soil and our plants are matured, we can start transplanting our plants into their final five gallon bucket homes. When I fill my buckets with my homemade soil, I purposely only fill it about 80% fill. This way, later on, I could come by and put a top dressing of some fertilized soil around the base of my plant when it needs it. When transplanting, I also inoculate my plant's roots with the mycos. This way they have the mycorrhizal association. Then I plant my pepper at the same depth that it came out of the other pot. At this time, I also put a stake in my bucket. This way, later on in the season, when the pepper plant is loaded with fruit, the stake could help keep it upright when it gets really heavy. When transplanting your peppers, you wanna actually pass up on the ones that have flowers on them or already have fruit on them because these ones won't produce well. Pepper plants take about two months from the time that you set them out to the time they actually start producing. So if you have a short season, make sure you pick some pepper varieties that are early producing. It's very important that before you bring your pepper plants outside that you first harden them off. Hardening them off is essentially just getting your plants acclimated to the outdoor growing conditions before actually bringing them out there. So what I like to do is the first day I'll bring my pepper plants out to like a shaded location and leave them out there for like an hour or two. Then as the days progress, I'll bring them, bring them to areas that get more light. And once the pepper plants can stay outside for at least 24 hours on their own, then I know they're ready to be transplanted outside. 
So you could either harden your plants off before you put them in five gallon buckets or after. Just make sure that you harden your plants off. At this point, your pepper plants should be in cruise control. Just make sure you keep up on watering them, but it's important not to overwater at this time. What I like to do is judge if the pepper plant needs water based on the weight of the bucket. So what I'll do is I'll lift up the bucket. If it feels really light, like it is now, then I know that the pepper plant needs water. I'll come out in the morning and water this pepper plant, making sure not to get any of the leaves wet when I'm watering. So I'll water it in just like this. Then you'll notice at the bottom, I've got a tray. So if I water just a little too much or the water passes through quickly, then the tray allows, it catches the water and then the plant can suck that moisture right back up. After the plant is finished watering and suck that moisture back up, I'll come by and lift the plant up just to gauge the weight so I know when it starts to get lighter. As the weather starts to warm, I like to put a mulch down around my plants to help retain the moisture and, and also help the temperature of the soil stay consistent. So I like to use either a diced leaf mulch, a nice thick one, or something like a wood chip mulch. Once the peppers start blooming and producing, they're going to be draining a lot of nutrition from the plant. So to compensate for this, I like to put a top dressing around the plant. So what I'll do is I'll take a five gallon bucket, I'll put some of my homemade soil into that, and then I'll take, say about a third a cup of an all-purpose fertilizer, mix that into my soil, then I'll take that, top dress it around the base of my plant, then water it all in, take my mulch, put it back around the base of my plant, and then water it in again. As your pepper plants start to head into production, you wanna have a stake in your bucket so you can tie the pepper plants to it just to keep them nice and strong and sturdy. So if you didn't put one in earlier in the season, I suggest you do it now, but it's advised to put it in earlier because now you're going to have to push that stick through some of the roots in your soil. When it comes to harvesting, most sweet peppers will get even sweeter when they go from green to red, yellow, purple, whatever color the predetermined variety is said to change to, that's when they taste the best. But early in the season, it's a good idea to go out there and cut some of these peppers off before they ripen. Because if you allow the pepper plant to hold on to some fruit and let it mature, then this plant is going to stop producing new flowers and mostly just focus on the production of seed. This is what we've been waiting for, time to harvest. But it's very important when harvesting your peppers, you don't just want to yank at the peppers because that can really damage the plant. What you want to do is take a pruner like this and make sure you cut the peppers off the plant so you can safely remove them. You don't do any damage to the plant. Also, when the expectation of a frost is coming, you want to make sure you come out and harvest all your peppers because once the frost comes, it's gonna end your pepper production unless you bring them inside or in a greenhouse. So let's taste one of these Jimmy Nardello peppers. Such a beautiful pepper, a sweet pepper. And most of the ones I grow are sweet peppers, although a lot of the information I've given you, it pertains to hot peppers as well. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Incredibly sweet. Strong pepper flavor. Absolutely delicious. Jimmy Nardello, it's such an incredible variety. And if you are new to growing peppers, you need to try the Jimmy Nardello. It's an old Italian heirloom, been around for such a long time, incredibly, incredibly productive, very just all around amazing plant, you can see, and it's a staple in the garden every single year. Another variety you should try if you're new to gardening or haven't tried it before is the Criolla de Cucina. Another heirloom variety that's been around for a while. This one is actually hails from Nicaragua. So it's got an incredible, awesome shape to the peppers. They almost look like they're like folding up it's just a beautiful specimen. You can see how incredibly productive it is and they have an excellent flavor as well. So if you're new to gardening, if you're new to growing peppers, you need to make sure you get these two varieties in. They grow fantastic in pots and man, they have great flavor. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope me and Tuck encourage you to get some peppers into containers if you don't have the space. Even if you do have the space like me, it still was a blast to grow in containers and they did fantastic. Me and Tuck were thinking just recently and like I was like saying it in my head, you know, just because you don't have space, that's not a good enough excuse not to grow some of your food. So it's like no space, no problem growing buckets. So that's kind of like one of the ideas and like the heart behind this video where we want to encourage people to get some food growing in their backyard. Like again, not having space to plant into the ground, that's not a good enough excuse. It just, it really isn't. So me and Tuck are thankful you guys came along with us. We hope we brought you some value in this video and we hope that you can grow your own pepper plants successfully in your garden. The things that I did to grow those peppers like beautifully and get good production, I shared with you everything that I did. So as long as you follow a lot of these instructions, I'm confident that you could have fantastic harvest also. Before I let you go, I want to mention, where's the boss? I hear him in the background over here. Let's take a look at him. This guy hasn't been in the video a lot. 
but he's doing his own thing, hanging out in the backyard. It's got hot out again today, so he's just relaxing, hanging out among the watermelons and you know, just supervising basically the important stuff. But before I let you go, I want to mention and thank one of our new channel members, Shannon Thompson. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for having your hand in everything we do back here. It, it means so much to me and the little boss. I also want to say to grab some of the merch down at jamesprizioni.com. Grab a Food Forest shirt, grab a Team Grow shirt, and join the team. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.